championship, the Florida Gators have won the Southeastern Conference Championship. Gator Zone is presented by Wells Fargo. Together, we'll go far. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Gator Zone alongside Gareth Gutierrez. Jeff Cardozo here in the swamp. An absolutely gorgeous day. The boys behind us getting ready for game day, which I know everybody loves to show up and uh, we love uh, having you here with us. Well, if you haven't already figured it out for our hardcore Gator Zone fans, this is the third show in a row that I'm here with Jeff. Yeah. And that is because Megan Parler, officially on maternity leave, Millie Parler came into the world a few weeks ago. Yep. Mom and child both doing really well. Yeah, congratulations to, uh, to Megan and Denver. Uh, their second child and uh, a lot of fun Gator memories ahead. And certainly a lot of people have memories inside the swamp. And we get to see the final result. We get to see the painted field, the lush grass, all the great players on it. But these boys out here working hard each and every time to make it look pretty for all of you out there. There's a lot of people that do really hard. <laughs> work here these guys may be one of the hardest working yeah. bunch here and they get the field ready for you and Brady Ackerman is going to tell you how they do it hey Gators when's the last time you had to paint something now nah, give you a minute yeah it's not as easy as it looks right and only a few people probably ever see your work well now think about painting a 120 yard field and have 90,000 people plus a national television audience see it on game day pressure not for the best field crew and artist in the country. Getting the colors is something we, uh, we really work with our paint supplier. It is more difficult than just going to your local paint store and saying, I need this coat of paint. So we really have to play around with the, uh, the colors to, to really get them to match up right. Thursday starts off with lines, basically gridding the field out because everything is based off of the lines. So the first thing we do, we just find our corners. That's our only permanent markers on the field is the four corners, and we just start measuring from there. The majority of Friday is logos. Logos are really challenging. You know, we really take our time and use shields and, and things to block the wind to uh, really make good crisp lines. I say by far, this is probably the best field like I've ever seen. You know, I don't know how they paint that big gator in the middle of the field. I feel like it's very intimidating for the opposing team to see that and see even the field and the fans. I feel like it's very intimidating, so it's awesome. On the gator head, it's just like our end zones. Uh, we have a large piece of plastic with uh, cutouts. We'll lay those out and basically dot the stencil. And from there, it's just filling you know, dot to dot and then just filling in. And uh, it's a pretty impressive logo that we have out on the 50 yard line. So. It's, it's pretty cool to paint it. To me, the grass, the mowing of it is more the artist, you know, coming out. Like I said, painting is, is really skill, but when it comes to mowing patterns, I feel like that is where sports turf managers do have an art skill. But yeah, it's definitely one of those things that keeps it exciting and fun, you know, just creating new, new patterns and stuff like that. Every game, for some reason, I have to go up and take a picture. Even though I have tons of pictures of the field on my phone, it's still, oh wait, this week looks better. So, you know, we're always going up and just look at it and see, you know, how it looks. However, we are our biggest critics, so we pick up on, you know, the, the little things that we can improve on and stuff. So we're always looking at it, seeing how we can get better. But like you said, at the end of the day, it is, it is very rewarding to, to see your work on, on TV. You know, after a game, sometimes panic sets in because you're like, you know, we have another game in seven days. Definitely, you know, you have a lot of work and you know that's going to be a long night because we'll start immediately after, after uh, the game that night and we'll work until two o'clock in the morning. So just to, you know, get the healing process started. You know, we've got a great crew. Uh, you know, they definitely take pride in what they do. You know, these guys have been doing it for years. Uh, it's, it's, it's definitely hard work, but it's also work that at the end of the day, when you sit back and look at it, it's very rewarding. They buy into it. They really take that extra step for the attention to detail, and uh, I couldn't ask for, for a better group. Thanks to Jason and his staff of dedicated Gators, the Swamp continues to be one of the best game day environments in the country. For Inside Gator Football, I'm Brady Ackerman. 
All right, Brady, thank you. Good stuff. And uh, of course, uh, good stuff on the grass here. Almost as lush it is at the White House. And this guy can tell you firsthand because he was on the trip with the baseball team celebrating their national championship. What a uh, tremendous accomplishment. Of course, a couple football teams have got to go and I'm sure is experienced like no other. I've watched a few other teams go up to the nation's capital, so I was really excited to partake in this one. The team got to go to the White House, the Capitol, tour some monuments. Here's a look back at the trip to D.C. Winning a national title comes with a few perks. There's the dog pile, the trophy, the rings, and the celebrations. Then there's the invite from the President of the United States to come to the White House. On November 17th, the Florida Gators baseball team headed to Washington, D.C. to celebrate the team's first national championship. President Donald Trump welcomed NCAA championship teams from all over the country to the White House, 18 teams in all. The Gators had a chance to meet and interact with the president. The highlight of the day was probably when Donald Trump walked in, you know, aside from people may have their political views, but that's the president of the United States, and it was really neat just to feel his presence in the room as, uh, you know, the most powerful person in the world. Yeah, I got lucky. I didn't I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, I, I guess I stood in the spot. I was towards the middle, and he came in uh, and sat in the middle of all of us to take the picture, and he reached out and shook a couple of our hands. So I remember last year I was filling out a questionnaire for ESPN or something where, they asked you, like, if you could meet anybody, who would you, who would you want to meet? And I put down Donald Trump. So to look back a year from, from then and now it's happened, it's kind of it's kind of surreal. Being able to see the president and seeing him up close and uh, going to the Oval Office, that was a great opportunity. I'm glad we were able to do that. Um, it was just, it's just being great in D.C. for the day with all these guys. After a quick trip to the White House, the team got a special message from Congressman Ted Yoho and a VIP tour of the Capitol building. The day ended with a trip to the Lincoln Memorial and the Vietnam and Korean War Veterans Memorials. I got the text a couple weeks ago that we were going to have the opportunity to come here and it was just, uh, I've been pretty excited about it. Uh, and once we got here, it's just a surreal experience to be able to see uh, all the things that people have done for this country so that we can live the way we do. It's pretty awesome. And these are once in a lifetime opportunities. You never know when you get another chance to enjoy this, especially with all the guys that um, were able to be in the national championship team last year. And um, just having all these guys back has been great, and it's been a truly honor. I'm blessed to be here. Jeff's out there making sure the lines are really straight for this weekend. Hey, Jeff, uh, keep up the good work. We'll be back with more Gator Zone on the other side of the break. Gator Zone is brought to you by Wells Fargo. Together, we'll go far. And by Gatorade. Win from within. Welcome back to Gator Zone. Jeff Gareth still here with you, and it's time to transition and talk about a little golf, a sport that during top plays a few weeks ago we found out I'm not that great at. But there is a guy on the men's team who's pretty good. Oh, at least you got great in there, but yeah, the knot was uh, certainly pertinent there uh, in front of. But yeah, Gordon Neal is phenomenal. Came to Gainesville all the way from Cali, and he's doing some really good things already as a second team All SEC member for JC Deacon. 2,398 miles. That's roughly the distance from Gainesville, Florida to Dove Canyon, California, golfer Gordon Neal's hometown. While for some, the distance might have been a reason not to venture across the country, but for Gordon, he knew the journey would be worth the trip. I knew the talent they had. I, I knew I really got along with them personally, and, and then the two coaches were really, really the selling point. I knew uh, they were the two guys I wanted to play for when I first started talking to them. They're just more approachable and seem to know more about the game. And I just, I just knew it was going to be a perfect fit for me with uh, the people here. Over the past two seasons as a Gator, Neil is one of the only two golfers on the team to play in all 33 rounds for the Orange and Blue. During these rounds, Neil has shown glimpses of the player that he can become for the Gators. Heading into his junior season, he knows that there's room for improvement. I just feel like my game's matured a lot been able to kind of use my talent better and um, not waste shots, just being silly around the place. Um, and there's still, still a lot of room for me to grow. Finishing second on the team in Eagles and third on the team in Birdies, one of the biggest things that Neil continues to strive towards is something all great golfers try and perfect. Anybody on this team could have, have a blackout day and beat Jordan Spieth, but um, it's that consistency that that you need to have a career in this game and be able to uh, 
hanging with the top guys every week. That I mean, that's what they do. So you can't you can't just have one good tournament. That won't do anything for you. It's you got to just get your game to a level where you can do it week in and week out, and that's the most important thing. While Neil brings a competitive edge to the Gators out on the links, it might be his positive and fun-loving personality that makes him irreplaceable. Where he's so much fun to be around. He's so great with the other guys, and uh, he's just he's a blast to bring everywhere, and he adds so much off the golf course to our team and, and that's honestly as important as any contribution that he's made on the course. You don't just pick up your life and move it across the country for just any coach. Neil knew that there was something there with Coach Deacon. JC's a great coach but I mean more than that he's, he's one of my best friends. I mean I don't, I don't feel like most people are able to have a, a relationship like, like that with their coaches but me and him are uh, extremely close. Sometimes I wish he could uh, put the coaching away and just play in our lineup for us a bit. He, so, he plays so well, but um, no, it's, it's a special thing to be able to play for a guy you're so close to like that. Gordon Neal um, brings a smile to my face when I think about him. He's, uh, he's a really special person. Um, I, I, uh, I love G to death. Uh, he's, he's become uh, more than just a student athlete. He's, he's a really good friend of mine, and uh, I, I love being around him every day. He, he brings a a uh, sense of humor and a lightness to our team that uh, has, has really made us a better group and, and improved our culture and that's something that Gordon's going to leave here that is probably more important than anything else. He's, he's helped change our culture and uh, I'm extremely grateful for that. Finding a relationship makes the experience special, but Neil also loves the feeling of success on the course and being able to be a part of the Gator Nation. Just the satisfaction of shooting a couple under par. I mean. There's nothing better than tapping in on 18 to finish off a good round. But I mean, the most special part about it is just being being able to be a part of a program like this, part of a university like this. The atmosphere around this place is, I mean, I don't have anything to compare it to, but it's so special. And so I'm so happy I was able to use golf to bring me to a place like this. After carding a career low, 65, at the 2017 SEC Championships, and being named All-SEC second team at the end of the 2016-2017 season. Neil will be a player to keep your eye on for the orange and blue. For Gator Zone, I'm Katie Leahy. All right, Katie, thank you very much. So Gordon has been uh, All-SEC once. Well, that is nothing in comparison to our next student-athlete, a soccer player that's uh, been really, really good here. That's right, Gabby Seiler, three-time first team All-SEC twice here this season and last season and before that she was at the University of Georgia for a couple seasons saw the light and transferred to Florida but in her final season there she was also first team all SEC so she's had a phenomenal career wrapping up here in her senior year here's Shelby with more about Gabby Seiler before she was making magic on the field in her orange and blue number 38 jersey Gabby Seiler was playing soccer for another university an SEC school 350 miles north, a rival. Before she was a Gator, Siler was a Bulldog. Georgia was just my comfort zone. Um, being from Georgia and always playing in Georgia, I kind of wanted to stay close to home. And then I think it was at the end of my sophomore year, I think I just realized I wanted something more. Um, not even soccer related, actually. I just kind of felt like for me to grow as a person and to get out of my comfort zone. This was the best decision for me. Now as a Gator, Siler has seen herself change not only as a player, but as a person. Soccer obviously gives you so many different avenues to life, but I think when I came to Florida, I realized there were so many different things other than soccer. I'm really thankful I did it because I think from where I was two years ago, three years ago to where I am now, it's kind of crazy to think how far I've come. Due to SEC transfer rules, Gabby had to sit out the 2015 season. But that wasn't a lost year for her in any way. I got to cheer on my teammates and I got to be kind of a support, more of a supportive role than I maybe would have been in the past. So I would, I would say just like my redshirt year overall was just a really amazing year. Getting to learn from Kristen and Claire, those types of things. I think I grew a lot as a player just being on the sidelines. Gabby made an impact that year on the sidelines, but on the field is where she really shines. Siler is one of the most versatile players there is. She can play any position on the field, 
and it's not rare to see her start the game on offense and end on defense, or vice versa. She's a huge threat on both sides of the ball. Well, she's more offensive-minded, so if you have defense, she'll get her stuff done on defense. She doesn't get beat. But she's also, she has an offensive mindset, so she will take all the kicks. I know she's going to do stuff with the kick, and she's always playmaking in the offensive half, always. Like, she, she is also off, always on, like, the other end of the ball. So she'll pass it. She'll be right there to receive it. She'll do an amazing pass to someone else, and she has the goal-scoring mindset. I love running, and I love getting up and down the field on both sides. So I think there's definitely pros and cons to both, but... I, I think I like them both equally. <laughs> One of the great things about Gabby is she's a very unselfish player, which in turn makes her an even better playmaker. Ever since I was little, I think I always cared more about getting the assist than I did the goals. I just like love seeing other people succeed, and so I think when I play, I really try to make everyone around me better. I just, I love being on the field, and I love making other people look good. She makes things out of nothing. We could be in the corner, stuck in a corner, and Gabby will come in, and next thing you know, she's across the field with the ball. I always knew if I gave it to Gabby, Gabby's gonna turn and make something of it. I never had to worry about someone leaving it behind or accidentally messing up and if she's going goal. When Siler's time as a Gator soccer player comes to an end, she wants people to remember how she treated others, not everything she accomplished on the field. I just hope people will know me as always being like kind of a positive person. I really care a lot about other people, especially my teammates, and it's more than just what you do on the soccer field, so I just hope that I can leave the whole legacy of being super positive or always being there for somebody or always being there for my teammates. I think that's the main legacy that I would ever want to leave. Gabby Seiler can score, defend, and put a smile on the faces of those around her, and her positivity and soccer IQ will be missed next year. She may have started out in enemy territory, but the Gators are lucky to have had Gabby Seiler wear a Florida jersey for part of her collegiate career. For Gator Zone, I'm Shelby Gurnapp. All right, Shelby, thank you very much. And Shelby had a really fun year getting to be around that soccer team. Unfortunately, the season over, they fell just short in the NCAA tournament, but uh, was nice to see Gabby here for a couple of years. What a great student athlete. It certainly was. Congratulations to Gabby on a great career here. And congratulations to Becky Burley's team on another great season. We've got to get to a break here on Gator Zone, but when we come back, we've got a little women's hoops for you. Gator Zone is brought to you by Wells Fargo. Together, we'll go far. And by Gatorade, win from within. Welcome back to Gator Zone on the court at Exact Tech Arena at the Stephen C. O'Connell Center. And this is the site of where the Cam Neubauer era began for women's basketball. They got a win in his first game. Always great to start a career off with a win. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, hopefully one of uh, many for Cam Neubauer because he brings a lot of excitement, a lot of energy, and people flocked to Fan Day because they wanted to meet him, the rest of the players, and uh, see what this team is all about. Jacob has the details. Tonight we are back in Exact Tech Arena for women's basketball Fan Day. Florida Gator fans will get their first look at head coach Cameron Neubauer and the Gators. Come on, let's check it out. I'm, I'm new to the Gainesville era and I've also been a, a big fan of the Gators for several years. So I just came out just to check out the women's practice and so far I'm really enjoying it. Well, to see Coach Newbauer, see the team, of course, you know, got some new players this year. Uh, Coach Newbauer, we had him, uh, uh, I'm with the Titletown Gator Club, I'm president of the Titletown Gator Club, so we had actually had Coach Newbauer a couple weeks ago. He was put on a, a great talk for us, we got the crowd kind of energized, and he just got a lot of energy, like fun to, he makes you want to come out and see it. There is no doubt that Coach Newbauer has energized Gator Nation, but an event like Fan Day gives a chance for the fans to energize the team. It's great. Anytime you can get energy outside of just our regular practice, it does a lot for you. And that's, that just shows you the importance of what the crowd does for you when, when you play at home. And uh, I've got the experience that at softball games, tennis, football, um, all the, you know, soccer, volleyball. I've seen what the Gator Nation comes out and does. So we understand fully how important that can be for us in our home games for sure. It just brings a lot of energy. Like it was so much fun having fans here in the stands. Like they were sharing us on, especially towards the end when we were running and stuff. So it just like creates a different atmosphere and it makes it more fun. Interacting with, with the fans. I love the fans. I think I think Gator Nation is one of the greatest attributes of being at Florida. And I think 
that a lot of people don't understand how much we appreciate y'all and how much we appreciate the fans coming in and supporting us no matter what, you know, in all kinds of weather. The Gators feel like they can turn this preseason buzz into a successful season. It's going to be a good season, you know, you're going to see a lot of stuff, you're going to see a lot of versatile uh, players, you're going to see Haley being able to stretch people out and shoot the three, you're going to see Paulino, who usually can shoot three really well, posting up people, you're going to see me and uh, Delisha get into the rim shooting the three. You're going to see Funda who can shoot it from deep. You're going to see our freshmen running like crazy. Like You're just going to see a whole bunch of things and it's going to come together and it's going to look so good. If there was anything we learned from Fan Day, Coach Neubauer has created a buzz around the women's basketball program that the fans can feel. And in return, the fans can expect the team that takes the court to reciprocate that same energy. For Gator Zone, I'm Jacob Lovelace. All right, Jacob, thank you very much. Good stuff from uh, Coach Cam. Really excited, looking forward to uh, what is in store for his team the rest of the way. In store for us, our final break here on Gator Zone, but on the other side, some top plays, including some from the hardwood. Hey, everybody, welcome back to Gator Zone. Gareth Gutierrez, Jeff Cardozo here with you. We're in third row of the student section here at Exact Tech Arena. Great spot to see. Uh, a three gore three and uh, even hear Mick go nuts if you're listening on the radio. Well, these are some great seats, but we're in the student section. We're right. not supposed to be sitting. Uh. We're supposed to be standing. So get on your feet for these top plays. Today's top plays are brought to you by Nike. That's off the mark. Rebound for Keith Stone. Chioza in transition, lobbing it ahead to Kivarius Hayes. Up the floor to Igor Kulichov, leaning in for three from the right wing. No, Kulichov chases down his own offensive rebound. Kulichov to the corner. Hudson pulls a three. That's good. Can tag up 93-92. Florida plays it out. Quickly up the floor. Chris Chioza stepping through against Perkins. The layup is good. Plus the foul. Chris Chioza. Snap to Blackman. Blackman under pressure, stepping up, looking to throw the ball and firing, and he's got a receiver. The ball tipped, and it's going to be intercepted. Taken down by Duke Dawson. Oh, my! Off the FSU receiver hand, right to Duke Dawson, made a juggling pick, and the Gators have the ball on the FSU 24-yard line. Left wing, Allen fakes a pass, launches the three. Off the heel of the rim, offensive rebound, Hudson. He flips it up and in, plus the foul. Carter on him. Jalen Hudson on the handoff, free throw line jumper. Trent with the block out, and Hudson is there flying in again, following his own miss. So some sweet plays, some sweet seats, and uh, plenty of opportunities this year for everybody out there to come join these seats and be a part of Exact Tech Arena. That's right. Go to FloridaGators.com, get your tickets today. But if you can't make it out, you can follow these Gators and all the Gators on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. Yeah, a lot of ways to do it. Great stuff as always, and uh, great to have you all joining us. But that's going to do it for another episode of Gator Zone. Today, he was my partner. Gareth Gutierrez. I'm Jeff Cardozo. Again, congrats to Megan, a new proud mama. We'll see her back soon. And, of course, to Mitch for shooting all of us today. That'll do it. We'll see you guys next time.